Hi everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Cosmic Climate. I am going to be talking about the new moon in Aquarius happening Monday, February 4th. The new moon will be at its peak or at the moment we're looking at in time is going to be 2.04 p.m. And the sun is obviously in Aquarius and the moon in Aquarius. They're both at 15 degrees. So we're basically at the midpoint of Aquarius season. Um, and then we also have Mercury in Aquarius too. So we have a lot of focus on this Aquarian season and just like working with this, this Aquarian energy. I'm sorry, I'm like munching on popcorn. So hopefully it doesn't bother you guys. I'm going to try to be really, really... Actually, I'm just not going to continue to eat this because I don't want to be annoying. That's kind of rude. So, yes, we're going to be talking about the new moon in Aquarius happening on February 4th at 2.04 p.m. So, as you can see here on this chart, the there's a big focus on this little area. It's the 8th and the 7th house. So Aquarius is ruling the eighth house, or actually the Aquarius is ruling the ninth house. Um, but all of these, like the sun, the moon, Mercury, and you'll see like Lilith there as well. Um, that is all happening in Scorpio's house. And so the theme of, of this new moon, and this is really like the dark moon. It's like at that moment, um, you know, of like where the sun and the, the moon are pretty much in the same, at, in the same location. And um, once you start to see that first sliver of, you know, that first little crescent, that's like technically the new moon. But this is, you know, this is the time we're looking at the new moon. It's still that same kind of energy. It's that moment before, you know, the dawn and, or just that kind of concept in itself. And so, this is going to be a time of, especially this weekend, like if you're someone who is has is born on a dark moon, um, this is a really good time or a balsamic moon. That balsamic phase is a good time for you in regards to manifestation. This is technically your new moon or this is where you're you're the most powerful. Like this is where you're the strongest in your own personal power. My moon is also my moon is a dark moon balsamic moon phase. So when I was born. So I have like a lot of experience with this, which makes sense why I feel this natural connection to the dark mothers and just like energy like that and just working in this in-between space. This is really in-between, right? And so it's also in Scorpio or in Scorpio's house, the eighth house. And so there's going to be a theme of um, liberation from conditioning patterns, um, you know, liberation of the soul through metamorphosis. So it's like, you know, going from this one point in your life or this one um, stage of enlightenment, and then you're literally transformed into something completely different and even more beautiful than what you could have imagined. So it's that whole process. That's like the main focus we have going on here. And so Aquarius is, is this, this new moon theme is really Aquarius Scorpio blend. So we have liberation of the soul, which really means, you know, liberation of, from comforts, past comforts. And you have the eighth house ruling Capricorn or Capricorn ruling the eighth house, eighth and seventh house. Capricorn is all about comfort and, you know, creating that comfort with like laws and rules and boundaries and limitations because it wants to just have everything like, okay, this step-by-step -step manner, this, you know, everything to be practical makes sense, you know, and it's all focused on time and like matter and the physical. And so when you cross that boundary into, or cross that, you know, point into Aquarius in the eighth house or in the 11th house, then it's like taking all of that suppressed energy in those comfort zones and really bringing that to the surface in order to spark transformation within yourself, um, within the collective and to really break free of the comfort zones or break free from rules and limitations that you've created for yourself and that we've created for humanity on, you know, on a collective scale. And so that's really the theme is like, how do you go about liberating your soul from these past comforts, from intentions that are happening subconsciously? So just like the actions that you just do, you know, things that are coming through from past lives. And because it's like, you've always 
felt, you know, comfortable in this place and, and you begin to, um, you know, create intentions or just like do things based on this comfort zone or based on like, you know, where you're coming from in the past. Because when I look at in your chart, looking at Scorpio and Pluto, that's where your soul's coming from. These are past intentions. This is like, you know, your comforts of the past, your security. Um, and so for you, if you know where your eighth house is in your chart and where Scorpio is, that'll give you an idea of that. And also obviously where Pluto is. And so all right, we're liberating our soul from comforts, subconscious intentions, mutual resources. Um, so maybe some of those, um, you know, say if you have a house with someone or a business or, you know, even this is intimate relationships too. So this is like your soul is seeking some aspect of liberation with, within these groups because Scorpio in the eighth house is all about the, you know, mutual resources, whether that's, you know, and sexuality comes into play, obviously like in our culture, taxes, money, business, you know, those kind of things, like anything, you know, resources that are, in, are connected with a person, another person. And these are very intimate. This is where I see like, you know, the house of, of marriage. I don't see it as Libra or the seventh house. I see it as eighth house because it's literally the merging of two separate entities into one. And that's where you get the sexuality. And so, um, there is, you're, there is a, a seek, a desire for liberation within these mutual intimate relationships. And so maybe it's like your partnership. There's some element there that needs to be worked on. That's coming forth from the, from the, you know, from the bottom, from the core coming up to the surface in order for you as a unit to really work with whatever this is and, and like turn it into something completely, you know, something beautiful and something that's actually serving instead of these old comforts, because obviously it's like, we have to, we evolve just as animals. Um, and our souls seek to evolve. And so it's happening regardless, you know, of our cooperation or not, like I always say. And so it's like how, you know, you know, um, these past um, challenging or like these things that may have been comfortable in the past, you know, like you got to let go of that. You got to switch it up, you know, or else it's going to get boring. And then, you, you know, it's just like lackluster. So this is a whole thing about switching, switching things up and breaking patterns. And, you know, we're in the Aquarius season. So this is that time of like where it's happening. It's just, you know, whether you like it or not. Um, and so also liberation, um, our soul is seeking liberation from our own limitations of our own power. So, um, whatever walls and whatever fear you have that's, um, separating you from really standing in your truth and standing in your power, that's going to come to the surface too, in order to be, you know, transformed. And so it's like, what are you doing? That's always like, how are you getting in your own way? That is, that's going to be one of the questions coming through too. It's like, how am I getting in my own way? How am I limiting myself? Is it like, I've always wanted to do this one thing, but it's just like, the fear of, you know, not being in your comfort zone or doing something just completely different or like the fear of hearing what others will say if you do take this this next path or this new direction. And so what's coming up right and now at this at this point in time to be worked with is, you know, how you are limiting yourself. So your soul seeks liberation within your own power, being able to really metamorphosize itself believe that's a word, right? Metamorphosize itself into something, you know, beautiful and something that's serving and something that's like magical. Um, and this is a never ending process because like, yeah, you're going to go through this transformative period now, but in what, seven years down the road, there's going to be something else. And, um, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Cause that's more of the Uranus, um, you know, influence happening too. Is, is that seven year cycle, but we'll get to that in a minute. And so, um, with this metamorphosis process, metamorphosis process and the liberation of the soul, there is also duality at play here, which is awesome because, you know, with the new moon and then really in this dark moon phase, it's really like you're in between worlds. So like, it's like the, the light and the dark. And so I love that, you know, with Aquarius and, and then the Scorpio house, you have that duality of Aquarius being a, an air sign, which is a masculine sign, which I look at as active energy, energy pro projecting, you know, from source or projecting from within and 
in projecting itself out. That's masculine. That's active. And then you have Scorpio, which is yang energy. It's water. It's feminine. And so it's passive. So it's like magnetizing and um, or magnetic and really bringing things in. It's receptive also. And it's just flow. So we have both energies to work with here um, during this time. So when considering rituals, um, any rituals that you might be thinking about, this is a good time to work with both the masculine and the feminine, just working with oneness um, and seeing how you can, you know, whatever your intentions are with this new moon, how you can really go at it from both um, both sides. Like, how can I hit it from, you know, be active, but also be receptive. And if you're usually leaning towards, you're always leaning towards one um you know, one expression versus the other. For me, I'm usually more passive with my actions. So now I'm, I'm definitely trying to like tip the scales and trying to embody more, um, you know, masculine active practices. So that's one thing to think about too during this time. Um, and one thing that I like about, okay, so we have the yin and yang going on here. We have that duality, but then you also have both Aquarius and Scorpio are fixed signs, which means they're, it's hard to get them to, um, diverge from, you know, like they have that fixed energy. It's like a lot of focus and a lot of passion and drive, you know, and it could go, obviously duality is always there. So the fixed energy can also in this chart represent, you know, these, you know, um, things that we always do, these habits, these patterns, like we need some force to get us to move in direction, like in a different direction. So that could be an implication here. Or you can also look at it as like, you can utilize the fixed energy of Scorpio and Aquarius to its advantage and, um, you know, drive in on what it is that your, your intentions are and really, um, really try to drive up like or connect with the passion like where's that passion within whatever area of life this is for you um so just to just to give you guys an idea of how this might manifest for you i would look in your own personal chart i would look at um the eighth house and the eleventh house and i would look at um aquarius and scorpio where that is and what house that's ruling and if you really want to get another layer i would look at uranus pluto and mars uh, but we'll talk about that too. Like this is going to be where you look in your own personal chart just to see how this personally um, influences you and how you can use this energy, you know, to um, execute whatever intention you're looking for. Um, and so we have that duality play, but we have the fixed energy, the passion. So how do you use that? Is it is it working for you as like, you know, focusing and being very like driven and passionate about whatever your intention is and really um, releasing a lot of old baggage and shit? Or is it working, is the fixed energy working against you where it's just like you feel so pulled to your comfort that you just like, it's, it's, you're getting anxiety about, you know, you're feeling this push towards breaking through the comfort zones, but you're, you're getting anxiety because you, you just, it's fear. Obviously it's the unknown. And that's like interesting too, because we're in this, like this void space. And so, um, oh, and the existential void is also a thing here. Like, um, you know, if it's, you know, the fear of death or the fear of just like, you know, this ultimate demise, like say if I have all these bills stacking up and it's just like, oh my God, I'm never going to take care of this stuff or be like over this, this hump or like get through this debt or whatever it is, or just whatever it is you're struggling with that seems kind of unbearable. That's going to, if that's something that's going on in your life this is going to be a time where that feels like really heightened because of just the energies that are happening. And so, um, Mercury is an Aquarius and Mercury is, is short term. It represents short term memory among other, other things. Um, but it's like how we learn and communicate. So this is also an Aquarius. And so same thing with Aquarius, there's some liberation aspect, liberation of the soul with communication. One, um, my girl, Stephanie, she's Arcana underscore SD on Instagram and on YouTube. Check her out. Um, she did a video a couple of days ago. And one of the things that stuck out to me, and it was a quote that she quoted from someone else, but it said, if you're the voice in your head, who's listening? That's so important at this moment because you have Mercury in Uranus, which Uranus is an air or 
Uranus rules Aquarius, which is an air sign, which has a lot to do with one, there's mental trauma um, or just like how you process things, obviously, on a mental on a mental level. Uranus, the ruling Aquarius is, is long term memory, which we'll talk about in a second. But you have this like very strong mental, um, you know, connection here between Mercury and Aquarius. And so this is very important to like really pay attention to the, your thoughts and how they influence your emotions, um, how they keep you in prison, you know, within your own comfort and how they, you know, how your mental patterns can limit, you know, create limitations, you know, um, of your own power. And so really thinking and paying attention, thinking, well, paying, <laughs> paying attention and being aware, just being aware of your own thoughts will really help move you, um, help you evolve, you know, for the highest and best through this process of, of metamorphosis and transformation. Um, and so this is also by paying attention to your thought patterns, to what you say to yourself and how that influences your emotions, because we're dealing with Scorpio. So these emotions go super, super deep, um, under uh, trying to understand that and then also looking at it from the other perspective of, you know, so I would say the thought patterns and what you say to yourself is the Virgo aspect of Mercury, that relationship. And then, you know, flipping it over and, and really seeing how you communicate with other people, which is going to be that Gemini side of Mercury. So it's like, how do you, you know, you're having these thought patterns, you're saying these things to yourself, then they influence your emotions. So how does that affect how you communicate with other people in your life? And this is in the eighth house. So it's those intimate relationships, family, partners, you know, brothers, romantic or business partners, just like those things the people that you're the closest to, you know, obviously including yourself. So that's really important at this moment. Um, Uranus, which is the ruler of Aquarius is really a really important placement right now. This is Uranus, you know, this is, is having a big, it, it's having a big influence on us collectively and individually. And this is really, um, the peak time of that. Like this is definitely, and I'll talk, I'm, I'm just going to talk about it <laughs> right now. And so Uranus is long-term memory. It's associated with long-term memory. So Uranus is, is looked at as a higher octave as far as like frequency and stuff like that, the higher octave of Mercury. So they have some connection to the brain and like, you know, the thinking process. So Uranus is long-term memory. And so this Uranus has basically the blueprints of the past, the present, and the future all in one. This is that moment, that electric, electric energy. Uranus and Aquarius is definitely associated with electricity and just fast moving like energy in that way, especially connected to the brain. And so um, right now, this time, Uranus is in the 11th house. And then you have, all, you know, all of these, um, these um, planets or a planet, the moon and the sun in Aquarius so right now there is this heightened connection to the guides, the angels, your higher self, universal energies, the collective consciousness. It's just like if you want to go beyond what's in front of you, what's being seen, if you want to go beyond to like what's unseen and connect to other dimensions, you know, connect to um, higher dimensional beings or just any of that, this is a very potent time to do any type of like astral travel or like deep trance meditation or any channeling mediumship, any of that stuff. Like this is a very potent time for that because Uranus is in its own house, the 11th house. So there's that. And then you have this heavy influence of Aquarius in Scorpio's house in, you know, the deep dark waters. But then also you have the ascendant, um, ruling or cancer ruling the ascendant so the whole instinctual nature the whole like intention like conscious desires like very like fast like direct which is going to be you know that rulership of mars which is also in the 11th house 
that is, you know, it's connected to with cancer It's connected to emotions and intuition and psychic ability. So this is a really potent time to like do any type of rituals with your, um, your guides and your angels or your higher self or whoever it is that you work with. That's, you know, you know, that's unseen. And so with this Uranus placement, Uranus is actually in Aries at the moment. It's 28 degrees of Aries. And so Uranus is one of, is, is at a really important placement this year. And it really started last year. Like you always hear me say, if you listen to any of my other um, forecast videos, um, Uranus moved into Taurus in the spring of last year. So almost a year ago. And it, you know, did its thing, but it went retrograde halfway through the year. And it just went direct at the beginning of January. So it retrograded back and from Taurus back into Aries. And now it's direct and it's moving back into Taurus to really um, start this new cycle of transformation. Um, so right now with Uranus and Aries at 28 degrees, we're really wrapping up what was happening in the last seven years. Um, and so... With also with Aries, Uranus and Aries, what this is really, um, it's initiating a new um, cycle, a next level of existence. That's what was happening with with Uranus and and Aries. That the last seven years was, you know, this um, liberation of your soul in regard to like starting a new cycle, um, aligning with new intentions, or really making new intentions and new desires for yourself. Um, and like I was saying, this is next level of existence. So learning and also learning about your actions and how those actions and desires um, affect others, you know. And so this is why, from my own personal understanding, I would, you know, if you have had people coming in and out of your life in the past, like especially in the past six months, but like last year, <coughs> excuse me, was a very transitional year when it comes to, you know, your relationships and your outer world, because it's like we're with Uranus, wherever Uranus touches the transit, it accelerates the energy of that house. Whatever trauma is associated with that house, it, it accelerates the transformative process of that. Um, you know, and that can get very specific based on where in this particular situation where Aries is in your chart, which is what we're talking about. And so my Aries and my personal chart rule, my Aries rules the fourth, the the sixth house. But a lot of Aries in my chart is in the fifth house. So for me, I was um, going through a transformative period of like my creative energy, my passion, what is my creative self purpose. Um, and then towards the tail end of it, it was like my actual service and community. And like, what are my new intentions with that? What are my, how do I um, build off of my instincts associated with, you know, this Aries and whatever my rising sign is, which is Scorpio. But that's a whole, you know, going layers and layers and layers of how to um, really see how what what this new transformative period as far as your intentions and your instincts like that was the last seven, the last like, seven years. I hope I'm not confusing y'all. I'm like all over the place. So, yeah. So the last seven years we, you know, and this was something that was happening instinctually. And so it wasn't like we made this like conscious, like. You know, it's tricky because Aries and Mars are associated with conscious desires, um, but it's more so in a very like active way. Like you're just doing like you, you have these desires within that are coming through from the Pluto and Scorpio, the unconscious desires, the, the subtle ones that, that are influencing you from the past. And like, you know, it's your soul's your soul's intention, um, you know, of, of the past where you're coming from. And so with Aries, it's like this is coming through and it's actualizing itself or through Aries, um, in the way of like how you do things. And that's kind of how your rising sign works too. And so with Uranus having this pat the past seven years, having its tra transit in Aries, this was, um, our, we were re or transforming our, um, our actions and what our desires are. And like, you know, it's also about your sense of self and your confidence how you feel about yourself. And so the first half of that was definitely, you know, it, it started with, with you 
you know, and then as the, at the end, towards the end of the transit, especially last year, you, or we began to see how this was affected, affecting our outside environment, our relationships. And so, um, you know, personally for me, it's like, okay, I'm changing, you know, I ended up changing certain things in myself and definitely a very different person than I was definitely seven years ago, but definitely even a year ago, um, or like a little over a year ago. And I've seen my relationships change very drastically because like my, my intentions have changed, my desires have changed. And so naturally sometimes that doesn't work with people. And so you'll see relationships just drop off. And it's very, it's very uncomfortable. It's very hard. And that's definitely Uranus. Like Uranus is like, it just takes that suppressed energy. It doesn't care. It's like, okay, no, this needs to change. You have to break through this. And like, I don't care if, you know, you lose your best friend. Like, this is what, this is your soul is, is like, we need to get you on that path, you know, that you, you know, set that intention for. And you can always change your, obviously your intentions. You can change if you, are not liking the path that you're on or what you chose, you can change aspects of that. It's just knowing how to work with that power and how to work with that energy in order to do so. And so that's Uranus and Aries. And so now, yeah, we're finishing up Uranus. You know, it did move into Taurus last year, but then it did its retrograde thing just to, you know, which gave us a little bit more time to really, really come to terms with like, who am I really? You know, I'm here, I'm existing. What does that mean? What are my intentions? So that was pretty much the second half of last year. And so now Uranus is direct. It's still in Aries and we're still like tying that up. Um, but now it's it's moving into Taurus, which Uranus is transforming. We're having this transformative process of our natural resources, um, you know, our value system, our survivalist instincts and our personal security. So Uranus is going to be shaking the foundations of that. And specifically during this time, like during this new moon, it's going to be shaking the foundations within our intimate relationships, the core of our intimate relationships, the core of like finance, the core of the existential void, you know, the losing oneself, you know, that's definitely Scorpio. It's like that, that merging, that ultimate merging and like just losing yourself and becoming something else. Like that can be scary. Like, you know, like if you've always seen yourself with this person, but you feel in your gut that you're supposed to be doing this thing or you're, you're supposed to be this person and like you just can't ignore it anymore. There is like this strong, there can be this strong fear and this feeling of limitation and wanting and like this, like you're wanting to stay in your comfort zone, but like you're in that in-between space. That's like, that's that cycle of Scorpio. Um, and so with Uranus moving into Taurus, um, that's just something like we're working towards. So this is like, if you're looking for, um, if you're trying to, um, you know, figure out some new intentions or like some rituals that might be, um, good at this time that it definitely focusing on, you know, what your values are and what you need, like for your own personal security for you. Um, and also really trying to complete that cycle of understanding your intentions, because this is in, you know, wherever, um, Taurus, whatever house Taurus is ruling, that will give you some idea for how this manifests for you personally. And wherever, um, whatever planets and stuff you have in Taurus or the second house will give you some idea how this influences you personally. Um, and so there's the shaking of foundations within these, these intimate relationships and mutual resources. But then you also see it on a collective scale, um, all that fucking funky ass weather that's happening, the, the polar, what vortex are they, I think they're calling it that's happening in the Midwest. Um, that is definitely like a Uranus and Taurus element or kind of like thing, um, and more so because it's like, we are at this point where it's like, we also have to address our values, um, and like how we treat natural, our natural resources. Like, are we just abusing it? Are we like being ethical with it? Um, if that makes any sense. So, you know, just like the weather and shit that has like, I mean, it's our planet, it's our home, this is our home. And it's like, what are our values and connection to that? Like, Obviously, money's coming up. 
because we as a society, as a, as a, um, planet or, you know, even as a country, money is, is really, we hold so much value to money because it's how we assess value to anything else. Um, and so that anything that's distorted within money, that's coming to light. And these are distortions associated with our value system as an individual and as a collective. Uranus is, is, is bringing up those distortions, bringing that into light in order for us to really like finally break free from these limitations and from these, these, um, rules and, you know, just the energy that's not serving anymore. Like we have to change some shit up. Like you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much the theme. This is a, there's a lot of Aquarian energy here to work with. Um, and so, like I was saying also, cancer is ruling the first house, ruling the ascendant. And so this is, you know, a time where your instincts and your intuition is very potent. Like, pay attention to that. That's like, you know, the ascendant is associate, associated with instinctual emergence or instinctual action. So just like connect to your intuition like it is coming through to help you, especially having this open channel with all of this um, Aquarius and Uranus energy going on. Like this is like we're wide the fuck open, especially because Aquarius is exi- like all of this stuff is happening in the eighth house. Um, one thing I didn't mention, you know, Aquarius is ruling the ninth house. And so also this, you know, we're doing this metamorphosis thing, but it's also happening within um you know, our belief systems, that's going to influence that because the ninth house is associated with belief systems, also associated with universal truths. So if you're able to really connect um, with any divine energy or anything like of a higher dimensional, you know, perspective, then we'll definitely, um, you'll definitely connect with the universal, like universal truths. So if you're seeking for truth about stuff and getting to the bottom of things, this is a potent time. This is happening now. Um, And, you know, Uranus is also associated with aha moments, like just like that fucking blip of like, oh shit, that realization, that just knowingness, knowingness is ninth house and Aquarius is like, has that, you know, the element to that. The ninth house also can be a representing, a represent, a representative of your, um, or a representation of your intuition and your right brain. Um, cause that's Sagittarius ninth house stuff. And so you know, everything's lit up. It's like, but it's more so stepping outside of yourself. So whatever challenges you're having right now, like you're not going to get it by like trying to like do things of the material world or like, you know, this is like your answers are going to come from within. It's going to come from the unseen forces, um, in your guides and your angels or whoever it is that you connect with. And so that's something to really keep in mind during this time. Um, we are really, working to strengthen our inner security, bringing forth our, you know, the outer, our inner security being our outer security or switching that up, if that makes sense to you. Like usually, you know, a lot of us look at outside of ourselves for validation. This is like the time where we're really looking within. And this is like a cycle that's happening for the next, like a little over a year with the the nodes being Cancer Capricorn. And so the way I even look at this whole experience with the new moon, this is definitely a metamorphosis, like butterfly experience. I really love, I was like watching a YouTube video about the process of like watching, you know, the butterfly do its whole thing, like the metamorphosis of that, that process. And this is totally what we're experiencing now. And um, if you're focused, if you um, at this time can focus on, you know, what your intentions are, how you see yourself how you feel when you think of yourself or see yourself as this, when you visualize the new you or the leveled up you, like this is a time to like create a ritual or, you know, even just have gratitude or make an intention based upon what that visualization and that feeling is, you know, the ideal, the idealistic, you know, perspective of who, you know, you're meant to be. So I feel good. I feel complete with this um, forecast. Guys, I am about to start or launch my Patreon. And so I will be offering 
weekly forecasts, live Q and A's with, with astrology or just any of the topics I talk about. Um, I will also be offering a monthly class, whether it's on astrology, cosmology, witchcraft, um, quantum physics, all the things. And I would like to, once the, the community gets big enough, I would like, um, to really have everyone kind of like vote on what class topic they want. So I'll be offering, um, a topic, a class once a month. And then I'll also be offering, um, personal cosmic climates for, um, individuals that choose that. So there'll be four different tiers of this Patreon community, but I'm so excited to get this out there. And so, um, stay tuned. I'll definitely do an announcement here on YouTube and on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, um, follow me at Urania underscore universe. Also, I just launched another Instagram profile and it's at serpent science, which is, um, this new thing I'm, I don't know. I just felt a, a pull to like create a new space or community for just like all the things that I learn. Like there's, I feel like right now there's no organization to it, but I feel like this is kind of going to be the basis of like my classes and, and just like getting that knowledge out there and really like having a community that's sharing um, a lot of information and knowledge and practices on all of these things and just working full circle with you know, um, the universal energy and really science and spirituality. That's the whole, um, thing I'm trying to bring together, um, which is a part of my own personal purpose. And so serpent science at serpent science on Instagram is also, um, a profile to subscribe to. And so thank you guys for listening and I will keep you posted on all of the things. I love you and happy dark moon, new moon, Aquarius, Scorpio.